afternoon, we've got Barb Price, who's a trustee of the Germana Foundation, uh, one-time uh, secretary and travel coordinator extraordinaire. Um, she's also one of our valued genealogists for the foundation. And she's gonna take you through some of the uh, things that we've done on the Germany trip and why this is such a unique opportunity for anyone who wishes to, uh, to go to Germany for a very, very unique experience. So Barb, I'm gonna turn it over to you. All right, well, hi everybody. Um, Barb Price here. I've been uh, leading the and planning the Germany trip since 2016. And I actually went on my first Germany trip with Germana in 2003. Um, took my mom with me and we loved it so much that we went again the next year in 2004. And then beginning in 2005, I started assisting Catherine and Madison Brown um, with the trip. And in 2016, they wanted to retire. So they asked me to, uh, to take over the trip, which was um, big, big footsteps to uh, fill, but um, well worth it, really fun to see everybody um, tour the villages of their ancestors and maybe sit in the church or the house or, you know, that kind of thing. So we will get started here. Let me, so I'm going to stop my video and uh, we'll get started here. When you take a trip to Germany with the Germana Foundation, <clears throat> it truly is the trip of a lifetime. And I say that it's a trip of a lifetime because um, each of the trips, is customized to reflect the ancestries of the travelers. Um, if you and if you you think that you connect to Germana, but you're not exactly sure, um, I can help you with that. Uh, we can get you to where you need to be with the with the right with the right ancestor. Um, and if you're not a descendant, we can help you with that too. And I'll show you an example of that a little bit later on in the uh, presentation. You'll meet new cousins uh, like the ladies on the left. And I know that uh, Linda Stevens is on, <laughs> is on this webinar. You'll meet new cousins like the Fleischmann, Schern, Blankenbuehler, Toma, Kafer, Schluchter descendants in Oberovisheim. Uh, and Oberovisheim is important because it's the church that was attended by all of those families. Even though they lived in Neuenberg, there was only a Catholic church there. So they attended the Protestant church, the Lutheran church in Oberovisheim. So that's where we go for those descendants. Um, you might visit the ancestral home of your Hoffman family in Eisern. We're very lucky uh, in, the in the north to have several of the homes of our ancestors still intact, occupied, and, you know, people living in them today. Um, also in Eisern is the Weber Weaver home from the first colony. It's been uh, renovated quite substantially, though. <clears throat> if you're a Merton or a Martin descendant, we'll vil visit the village of Musen and show the group Stahlberg. It's a mine that dates from 1310. It's quite fabulous. It's very interesting to go down into the mine. Um, not far away is the church that was attended by the Martin, the Kempers, and the Brombach families. Uh, all that remains of that church is the tower but uh, we have a very good relationship with the minister there, Pastor Weiss, and he brings the church books with him. So that's pretty cool. If you're a Klar or a Klor, you'll visit Gimmingen with your cousins. Uh, maybe meet your German Holzklau cousins in Oberholzklau. Um, this photo on the left, that's me in the green shirt with the short brown hair. You notice I'm all white now. <laughs> and my mother to the right with our, our American Holzklau cousins and the two, uh, the man and the woman in the front, they're our German Holzklau cousins. 
it, we had quite a unique experience in Waldbach. Um, that's where we go if you're a Wayland Wayland descendant. We visit St. Killian's Church. Um, it dates from the 1300s. It's absolutely beautiful, uh, complete with a baptismal font in use uh, when the Wayland family attended church there. And it just so happened that the day that we were there, uh, the village was conducting a lot of baptisms and they had a small orchestra um, playing there. And the young woman on the right, the tall one with the dark hair, she is a Valen descendant. So our American Valen descendants got to meet their German Valen uh, cousin. And if you're not a Germana descendant, that's all right too. Uh, this family, the Volz family, they came along on the trip with us uh, last year. They had heard a lot about the trip from a, a friend of theirs, Liz Solenberger. She went on one of our Germany trips. And so they thought, well, we'll just go along on the trip, see the small villages, you know, that type of thing, take a different tour of Germany. Well, it just so happened that my co-leader and I, E.K. Mello at the time, we thought, no, we need to do more than them just come along on the trip. So we found their village. Um, we contacted a local genealogist there, Kunar Krieger, and he met us at the church. He gave them a lot of information about their Volts family. And there they are with uh, the baptismal font that was used by their Volts family at the time that they lived there. So even if you're not a Germana descendant, you know, we can, we can probably help you. A lot of times, especially in the North, in the Ziegerland, uh, we have a lot of access to original records. Um, the North seems to have allowed their local churches, the parish churches, to keep a lot of those original records and church books. So um, if you don't ask, <laughs> you may not see them, but I always ask. <laughs> so a lot of times we will have access to those original records. Um, we do have some Kuhn's descendants on the right, um, looking through the church books at Oberfischbach. Um, Jacob Holtzclau was the school teacher there. So his two sons' baptismal records are there. The Kuntz family attended church there. And so did the Spilman Spillman family. So they're, a lot of their records up to the time of immigration are in those church books. Uh, we always have a presentation. In fact, we, we start the Germany trip tour in Oberfischbach in the north. And one of the reasons why, <clears throat> excuse me, is because Henry Hager was the pastor there in Oberfischbach and Jacob Holtzclaw was a school teacher. And they are a lot of the reason probably why a lot or several of the um, people in the first colony emigrated. I call them catalyst. Um, Henry Hager would have been influencing not only Jacob Holtzclaw, but all of Jacob's friends and relatives in the village of Trutbach, which included the Fischbach, Heimbach, Otterbach, um, Richter, Rector, and the Ney, Noe families. Um, and then also, in Oberfischbach, the Kuntz and the Spalman, Spillman families. And we know that um, many members of those families immigrated not only in 1714, but later in the 1730s to form the Little Fort Colony in present day Jeffersonton. Um, so when we go to Oberfischbach, Gerhard Moisel gives us the history of the village and the area. He is quite um, a knowledgeable man. He um, was the archivist for the Protestant church in Siegen. So he has access to a lot of records. And every time that we have the presentation in Oberfischbach, 
he brings the contract that Albrecht signed with the ministers of Zieg in, in 1711 to recruit miners to come to Virginia. And he lays it out on the table and it's this beautiful document complete with the seals. And we're all flabbergasted. And I've seen it many times, but it always, you know, blows me away. And he says, it's just paper, but it's so much more than paper. So we do have access to a lot of the original records. Um, down below, you'll see the marriage record of Henry Hager and Katharine Friesenhagen in 1678 as well. <clears throat> We're given access to ancient sites. Uh, one of the places that we go to because mining was so important to the first colony in the Ziegerland is this incredible Latin Windhofen. It's a wind oven that literally dates from 500 BC in the hills above Eisern. It was found in the 70s, discovered by hikers, um, and very well preserved and protected now. Um, another component of the mining industry is charcoal making and forest management. So we do make a stop at the Halberg in Fellinghausen. Um, it is an ancient practice of land management unique to the Siegerland, dating from the 1400s. It's pretty cool. It um, helps to give, what it does is it gives a rotation between um, pasture land and forest. Um, it's, yeah, it's interesting to watch. <coughs> Excuse me. And then in the South, um, Johannes Kirsch, St. John's Church in Schweigern, the original chapel dates back to the ninth century there. It's it's just an amazing place when you walk in from this small village and you see this magnificent church complete with all of the uh, religious relics. I, I'm blown away every time uh, we go there. Um, we visit historic sites. Um, as I know that Linda Stevens is on uh, this, this webinar today and she is a Fleischmann descendant and she asked me during the last trip do you think that we could stop at the village of Klings on our way south so uh, we checked it out and sure enough yeah that works so we went to Klings on our way south um, we visited the church of the Fleischmann family and we um, made our base there for a couple of days in Eisenach, which was really nice because we were able to visit the home of Johann Sebastian Bach. He was born there in 1685. That's his yellow house there. Um, magnificent music museum. And then we were also able to visit and tour the Wartburg Castle, first mentioned in 1080, but of such significance um, it's where Martin Luther spent a year. He was under the protection of Frederick the Wise, and that is where he translated the New Testament from Greek to German. That's his little room over there to the side. So we'd like, you know, it's ancestry, um, it's history. Um, we learned about the history of the area from um, several different people. We have great experts uh, that uh, are in each and every village and church that we go to. We want you to know, um, you know, why we're visiting there. What, what is, why is it important? Um, sometimes the lesson, lesson is given by a local expert like um, Frau Bergholzer at the Hellberg in Fellinghausen. Um, she's on the right and sometimes it's our own uh, traveler, Archer Martin. He is an archeologist in Rome. He's been there for more than 40 years. He's a Hoffman, Hager Friesenhagen descendant. He came on the trip with us in 2016 and he's been on every trip with us since then. He's uh, just an integral part of the trip now. Um, <clears throat> He uh, knows eight languages, so he translates for us, and he um, gives a lot of history um, 
about the area as well. We are greeted uh, by mayors and brass bands and members of the German Bundestag. I can't tell you um, how, how happy and joyful the Germans are to have us in their villages. Um, they are really blown away by the level of interest that the Americans have in their German ancestry. And so they, I'm telling you, they bring out the red carpet for us. Um, we have been greeted by the mayor of Birmingham, the Amberger village and standing just to the left of him is Anne-Marie Ackerman. She has become a fabulous contact for us uh, in Birmingham. She's found um, some very good rec records about uh, the Ambergies and also the location of their house, which was very close to the church um, there. So she's, um, and she wrote an incredible book called Death of, the, Death of an Assassin, which is well worth reading. Um, if we don't have Ambergers on the trip, uh, then we invite Anne Marie and her husband to come and share a meal with us. We want to, you know, keep her close to us. Um, in Trutbach, they have a brass band for us out there. Um, as you can see, it's the home of the Holzklau, Otterbach, Heimbach, Fischbach, Noe, and Richters. One of our German trustees, Dr. Horschmidt Bocking, he's um, the man playing a trumpet. He's to the left of the woman in the red skirt on the far right. Um, he grew up in Trutbach and he gives us a lot of history about the area during World War II. He was just a child then. Volkmar Klein, um, he, he uh, meets us every year that we're in Germany. He's a member of the German Bundestag, which is their parliament. He represents the Siegerland. <coughs> Excuse me. He is, um, he is the, not the tall man on the right, that's Volker who's on this webinar, but the uh, man to the left of me uh, with the black jacket on. Um, and the Fleckerei is one of our favorite places to eat. It's a local restaurant right down the street from our hotel so we can walk there. Um, and it truly doesn't get much better than being <laughs> greeted by the American Consul General, Fiona Davis. That was quite a treat. Uh, we gave her a lot of history about Germana, the Germana colonists, Germana story. And she has that information um, at the consulate, the embassy. We reunite with old friends and we make new friends. Um, some of these people like Alita Mathe on the left with the, the uh, baptismal font. Um, she, she has been uh, leading the um, Zeekin tour for us since 2003. And she now assists me with planning uh, the trip. And to the far left on the bottom, that's uh, Maria Kramer, always also known her since 2003. She's um, a member of the Freudenberg Heimat, Heimatverein, which is a um, local history club, also known her for 17 years. And to the right of Alida is Volker Schuttenhelm. He's the tall guy on the left with his Germana uh, apron on, and to his right is Helmut Otto, who is related to Archer Martin, and he has taken a keen interest in the Germana Foundation, and he has assisted us with our tour in the north um, every year. Um, the little bowed man on the right, he's, that's, he's one of our contacts in the church in Gemmingen. <coughs> um, you can see a picture of Gerhard Moisel. He's down at the bottom with uh, my little granddaughter when she was only eight. She went with us on the trip with my daughter. She's in the pink sweater. And then to the right is Hannah Lori Vick. She has been guiding us through the church at Oberu Wischheim since 2003. Also, we've made a lot of 
really good friends um, on the trips. And last but not least is that little black cat that lives at Villa Waldeck in Eppingen comes to visit us in our rooms. Um, we ride in, a, in the comfort of a luxury bus. The buses are great. They're very comfortable. Um, the drivers are so knowledgeable. Um, it's never easy uh, driving through those little narrow streets and um, they can certainly do it well. And then Peter, he was, he knew when to take a break because if you're a Jaeger and you go to Falkenstein, oh, I'm telling you those streets there are so steep. You, walking down's great, coming up, not so good. <clears throat> At the hotel on the left is the Zur um, Allstadt. It's located in the older section of Freudenberg, the Alter Flecken. Uh, all of the buildings there are half timbered, some covered with slate like the hotel is. And they all date from the 1660s. Um, they had their last big fire there in 1666. I think there was only one house that was left um, after that fire. Um, but it's it's quite a neat um, quite a neat hotel, very nice and comfortable cobblestone streets. On the right hand side is the Villa Waldeck. It's a family owned hotel. We've been staying at both of these hotels actually since two thousand three. Um, the Villa Waldeck is located just outside of Eppingen. Oh, it's beautiful out there. Um, lots of rye fields. You have a view of the village and um, three generations uh, in that hotel. When we first started going to Germany, uh, 2003, it was uh, Frau Krepp. And now it's her daughter and granddaughter that run the hotel. So it, yeah, it's a, it's a very nice place. So if you're not a Germana descendant, you're not interested in history, you don't really care about any of that stuff, well, you can eat your way through Germany with us too. That's what I say that we do as well. Uh, we have fabulous food, um, the, like the Maltaschen and Gimming, and you'll find it in the South, but you won't find it in the South, in the North. Um, potato waffles in Netvin, yeah, in the North, not so much in the South. Um, and the wine at the um, Nyperg family castle and winery in Schweigern is um, excellent. We have a lot of dessert there too, I hate to tell you, but we do a lot of walking to make up for all of the eating that we do. So don't fret about that. <laughs> um, it's really nice to be invited into the home, you know, of the Germans. Um, you'll see the all of our travelers seated at the table. That's in Conmarienborn. It just so happens to be right down the street from Raybach, um, the farm that was managed by um, the Haida family and Peter Hitt. So all we have to do is walk down to the end of the street and there you are. Um, ice cream, lots of ice cream, I have to tell you. <laughs> That's my granddaughter in Heidelberg. She went with us on the 2018 trip as well. <clears throat> thought I'd give you a little bit of a sample itinerary so that you know, you know, what might be in store for you. Um, I will say that if there's a day that you don't want to go, you know, out with us, um, you know, with group, you don't have to do that. You can stay behind. It's, it's all up to you. Um, and, you know, keep in mind that the this is just a sample because the itinerary is based on um, the ancestry of the travelers. So if like on the 18th of June, if we don't have Jaegers, then we wouldn't go to Falkenstein or Marienthal, um, but we could still go to Oberovisheim. We could go to Lamsheim if you're a Chrysler, right? Um, it just depends on, you know, the ancestry of the travelers. Um, as far as shopping goes, because I know I've, you're in Germany, so you want to do a little bit of shopping too. For the most part in the small villages, um, maybe what you would want to get is a 
um, a pamphlet on the history of the church or the village, um, they wouldn't take credit cards. So you would definitely need some cash with you, some euros. I wouldn't myself take more than a hundred. I don't think I've ever even spent that much while on the Germany trip, but you would want to have a little bit of cash like that. As far as um, credit cards, the credit cards are, you know, well accepted there. And you can also pull out cash from ATMs with, without a problem. You just need to alert your financial institutions ahead of time that, that you're going there. Um, big shopping opportunities would be in Ziegen. We start the Ziegen tour in the morning at the upper castle, and then we wind our way down to the lower castle, have lunch, and then the group is on their own, <coughs> excuse me, for the rest of the day. We meet in the evening for dinner. Um, and then the other big shopping opportunity would be um, on the 16th, you'll see Rotenberg of der Tauber. Oh, that's quite a beautiful um, walled medieval um, village. Uh, we may do a stop in the morning on the way there, but uh, we would be there uh, well before noon, um, either have lunch as a group or lunch on your own. If you were going to have to buy a meal, that would probably be the only meal that you would buy. Um, Rotenberg has some great shopping there. And then uh, we would do dinner there, like at the Marcus Sturm, and then uh, go back to the hotel as a group. So the dates for the 2021 Germany trip are June 8th through the 20th. Um, of course, the trip is, you know, all uh, uh, dependent on um, our world, <laughs> our world situation. Um, but the trip price includes nonstop round trip flight from Washington DC to Frankfurt. We usually leave about six in the evening from DC, arrive around eight in the morning in Frankfurt. And then um, the bus meets us at the airport and it's about a two hour drive up to Freudenburg. So um, that first day, we really don't like to have a lot of um, activity. Sometimes, you know, like with the Consul General, that was when she was gonna meet us that evening. So, you know, we did go there, of course, to meet her. Um, but normally we would have uh, a few hours to rest. And then we take a really nice little walking tour of the village of Freudenberg and have dinner at the hotel. Um, transportation throughout Germany in a comfortable bus. Um, uh, the trip price includes the entrance fees to all the museums, castles, you know, all of that that we may go. It also does include basic travel insurance. <clears throat> that is not a cancel for any reason policy but it does cover medical uh, uh, things if you were to become ill there and also lost luggage, you know, that type of thing. Uh, meals, definitely, I can assure you, you will not go hungry. Um, the hotel accommodations. Um, and to hold your spot on the trip, uh, we do require a non-refundable $200 deposit unless the trip is postponed um, due to COVID. Then, of course, we would give that back to you. Um, we do limit the trip to 25 people. So the first 25 people who send in, you know, that deposit will have a place. You can contact Barbara Bounds um, at this number will give you also the website too, so that an email address so that you can contact that way as well. So come with us to Germany. <laughs> come to Germany with Germana. Um, we'd love to have you with us. Thank you, Barb. That was oh, fantastic. <laughs> I will, I will second, and I'm sure everybody else will, third, fourth, fifth, um, that this trip is an amazing uh, 
adventure, um, whether you're a descendant or not. Um, I had a fantastic time on this, um, on this trip. I knew I was going to, but it was, um, if you're looking for a small cultural rich experience, this is, this is it. Um, we've got some questions um, sure. for you. And I want to remind folks that um, if you have questions, please use the Q and A part along uh, to the very right of the screen at the bottom uh, to answer your, to get your questions answered. Um, the, the first one, and, I'm going to rephrase it a little bit for you, Barb. Um, someone's asking, you know, what what are some of the most meaningful experiences um, for you and your family? And and I know that you've also gone and, and taken your family, but you've also heard what others have really gotten out of this. So can you can you kind of point out some of those meaningful experiences? Yeah, I I think. Um... I think what's really neat about the trip is that um, you have this group of say 25 people. Uh, most of them don't know each other, right? Uh, we're all strangers. Um, and we go through the itinerary to each village. Um, I um, included in the trip is the travel guide that I compile, I put together. So it'll have the history of each village that we're going to um, and the um, genealogy of the family that goes with that village. So you go to each of these villages, you know, down the line, and I'm telling you, it is so incredible to see each, each person have their turn. Um, it brought us all to tears in 2016. Liz Solenberger, she's an ailer. We're in the village of uh, Cleburne and she is, she's an organist um, and she's sitting at the organ in the church of her ancestors playing the organ. I tell you, we were all crying. I mean, it was just, it was amazing. It's just amazing to, to watch everybody, you know, in their place, whether it's walking down the street, sitting in the house, sitting in the church, um, that that's what's so meaningful to me. It's watching everyone have their have their turn. It's it's incredible. Great, thank you. Um, I'm going to combine the these two next questions. Um, Someone's asking what the cost, the possible cost per person is and what are the COVID contingencies for next year? Of course, we don't know what next year will bring, but we can talk about what we did this year. Um, well, this year we pretty well had most of the trip planned uh, when the COVID uh, pandemic struck. So we had to put you know everything on hold. We refunded everybody's uh, money uh, to them. We already had our flights scheduled, hotels booked, um, villages, you know, um, on the on the tour, everything pretty much done. Um, so we just, you know, we had to refund everything back to the people um, that had signed up. And then several of them have already signed up for next year's trip for 2021. So we just transferred all of that um, over. Um, the trip price is, it's $49.75, and that's $4,975. Um, that includes everything for 12 days. So it's actually quite, um, it's quite a reasonable price for the kind of trip that you get because you are not going to get into churches the way that we do. Uh, most of the times, if you go over there and you um, go to Schweigern and you want to get into the church, it's going to be locked. Um, you just, you can't, you can't get into the places that you want to get into and, and we can do that. And I think that uh, there's several people that are on this webinar. I think that they can attest to, um, to the trip and, uh, price-wise, that, that type of thing. Yeah, it's well worth it. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 
I know the answer to this, but I, I think it might be good to, to um, someone's asking if there's only one hotel for the entire stay. And the quick answer is no, No. but you need to, I, I know that we stayed in three places. We stayed in three. It kind of depends. Uh, in the North, we have um, the Zur Allstadt. Our base in the North is Freudenberg. And we do that. We don't, we do that for a reason. We don't want to be skipping around to different hotels all over the place. It's nice to be in one place for say five days, five nights so that you can, you know, put your stuff away, that kind of thing. Um, on the way south, um, like we went to Kling's, you know, the, the one time, um, sometimes we'll just drive from um, Ziegen, stop on the way in the middle somewhere in the south, like maybe go to Brownfells and to the castle there or Herborn or, um, you know, that kind of thing. Um, and then we'll end in the evening um, in Eppingen. So mainly it's two hotels that we stay in. In the north, it's um, the Zuralstadt, and in the south, it's a Villa Waldeck in Eppingen. It helps a lot to have that um, stability. Right. Yeah, I, I, that was one thing I appreciated, well, and I think of many others, is that you weren't changing hotels. No night after night after night so um, unpacking and packing yeah, no i don't like exactly, that <laughs> no. exactly exactly <laughs> no <laughs> exactly um i'm going to answer this one someone's asked what exactly is the germana foundation um i'm happy to answer it or you go can. right ahead no go ahead okay go ahead. <laughs> um the germana foundation was founded or established in 1956 uh and what we do is we preserve um, and research the genealogy and the history of um, the Germana colonies. And that uh, focus for us in Locust Grove, Virginia, is um, the archaeological remains of the uh, fort, uh, which we're still looking for, um, and that history and genealogy of um, the first two settler settlement groups that came in from Germany, from these two regions of Germany, to Virginia in 1714 and 1717. And then from there, they migrated, the 1714 group migrated to Fauquier County, Virginia. Um, and the second group migrated from there to Madison County, Virginia. And now we're spread out across the nation and the world. In the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so Volker has asked, wants to let everybody know um, <laughs> that all the members and the board of the German, German American Association are very much looking forward to wel welcoming us in 2021. And we're hoping that happens. <laughs> it's, so, it's so amazing to go there. I remember the first time in 2003 when mom went with me, we went to um, Eisern. It was one of our first stops and, you know, 2003, just a couple of years after 9-11, you know, we weren't sure what kind of, what kind of welcome we would have in Germany. And we walked in to their, um, to their meeting house, their Heimatverein meeting house, and it was just covered with American yeah. flags, American flags flying everywhere. And that's, that's how it is. Um, the Germans are they are just very, very welcoming. They're so glad to see us there. And thanks to Catherine and Madison Brown. Um, and I am so grateful to be able to, you know, continue what they have started. We've just built this beautiful, wonderful bridge of, of self uh, mutual respect and friendship. And um, it's, it's very, it's very heartening. Yeah, yeah it it's is. incredible. It, it is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and the last question I've got, if folks, if you've got questions, we've got a few more minutes. Um, is there a cost for the trip only? Someone's interested in staying longer. So I assume that they would meet us there. Oh, yeah, we can do that. Um, that's not a problem. We're real versatile um, in the trip. Um, some, of the, um, some of the travelers want to fly on their own which is fine. So yeah. I would, you know, take, um, 
I would discount um, that for them. And if you want to stay longer, uh, we can accommodate that as well. We have, uh, we've had lots of people that do that. Um, that that's not a problem. We just work with um, Lufthansa. They do our group reservations and um, that's not a problem at all. We can do that. Yeah, mm -hmm. fantastic. Um, I don't see any more questions. Um, right. I, I'll do my, my little plug. Um, if you have um, uh, any, would like more information about the, uh, the Germany trip, you can go to germana.org and click on the travel page. And there's a form there that you can fill out or you can contact um, germana at, sorry, foundation at germana.org. Um, and we'll get, we can get information to you for that too. Um, oh, we've got one more um, <laughs> question coming in if you're, if you're up for it, Barb. Yeah. Yeah. Um, what percentage of the group are repeat tour travelers versus first time participants? Oh gosh, you I would say. You mentioned that the 2020 tour rolled over to 2021. Does that right. mean some of the 25 slots are already taken? Four of them are. Yeah. Four of them are mm -hmm. from, yeah, travelers from the 2020, 2020 trip. Yeah. I would say um, probably 90% are, are new travelers. And um, we'll have some repeat travelers. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anything else you'd like to add, Barb, before we, we sign off? I just think that it's, um, it's, it's just a very unique trip. Um, it's fun to uh, m meet so many new people. And what's interesting to me is that uh, then when we have reunion, the Germana Foundation reunion, which is the third Sunday in July, yes. when it's nice and hot and sticky. <laughs> yeah. It's Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, it's kind of neat because uh, so many of the people that travel on the trip, they come to reunion. And uh, we have photos of, you know, so many of us that were on like one of the trips and we all gather there at the reunion. It's really, it's a lot of uh, good camaraderie, a lot of good sharing. Um, I've made friends, I'll, I'll have them for the rest of my life. Uh, it's all through, it's all through Germana. Yeah. yeah. Who would have thought, you know, right. 30 years ago when I started <laughs> family research that it right. would that it would come to this. Yeah, it's, it's very, yeah, very rewarding. Yeah. Oh, great. Thank you so much. All I'd right. like to thank everybody for, um, for participating with us. Yeah. The, we had some great questions. Um, I would absolutely second Barb. This is a fantastic, unique trip for folks. And um, you can contact us on the website or through email uh, if you would like more information about this. Um, thank you all for very much. And you can see a recording of this. Uh, we'll, that'll be posted soon. Um, if you want a repeat of it or, um, you know, folks who would like to see it or you go, hey, John, you might would be interested in this. So it is, it is recorded and it'll be up on our website soon. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you want to talk to me personally about the trip, I have no problem right. with that as well. If you email to the foundation at germana.org, um, send along your contact information. I'd be more than happy to talk to you. Yeah. Yeah. That, Fantastic. That's not a problem. Okay. All right. Thank you all very much. Thank you, Barb. Thank you. Good yep. to see you. Good seeing everybody. Thank you.